Hi, my name is Brett from Blue Attitude. Today in this short session, I'm going to cover Annex 2 of the Part 145 regulation and focus on the key differences with the introduction to SMS. Now, if you like this video, then give us a like. And also, if you're interested in, in, to find out more about what we do, then please subscribe to our channel. So let's just carry on with this uh, session. So just to clarify, really, is like an important update where we are at this moment in time uh, for this like recording. So at this moment, this presentation really is applicable to the and the after approved part 145 maintenance organization only. And really that's based on the implementing regulation 20 or 2021 slash 1963. Now really if you're a third country and you have a part 145 maintenance approval issued by EASA, then like for example if you're located in the United Kingdom, then really this is still going to be applicable to you. All right. What I will just say to you at the moment, just out of interest, with regards to the United Kingdom, the Civil Aviation Authority, there's nothing yet being published to give you an indication about the transition towards having like an SMS in the 145 regulation under the UK authority. So at some point that may be published at some point in time. So we'll have to still wait out and see. But really this presentation today or this little section is really going to focus on the EASA requirements. Just to confirm, the compliance date starts from the 2nd of December 2022. And within that, you'll have like a two year period to obviously close out any sort of findings that have been raised against your organization. At that point, on the 2nd of December 2024, you should have to ensure that all your findings are all closed out. If you, if you haven't done that, then your approval will be revoked or suspended. Just to clarify as well, still at this moment, so we're now in May. Uh, 2022, the AMC, so the Acceptable Means of Compliance and the guidance material have yet not yet been published to help us or further understand what's going to happen now we meet the intent of that implement and regulation. I am guessing just as, for myself, I expect really that we're going to see that round about June or early part or no later than July really because we still need to have that six months or ideal sort of transition into that regulation so we can make sure we have everything covered. Okay, so just to move forward then, just to confirm the other few things, what's new in the regulation? So really reviewing that regulation at this moment in time, the implement regulation that I just described before, just picking out the key bits for you, just so hopefully I'll try and make it easy for you to understand. With the implementation of this change, what's gonna happen now, we're gonna to move towards what we call like a performance and a risk-based approach to how we conduct our business. So when I say business, I'm talking about the 145 maintenance organization. And really we need to try and demonstrate our performance uh, and demonstrate how effective we are in managing what we do. So the way we're gonna do that is ideally is trying to understand the risks or the understand the risks to us as a business. So what that really means, moving, you know, moving forward, we're gonna to have to focus on what we call like having an effective or a safety risk management system which needs to be effective so what that means is we're going to have to think about our safety policy have some sort of safety objectives we need to think about the hazards within our working environment so that's like the hazard identification there'll be like a management a change process and really we, we need to up our game a little bit in order in order to satisfy the regulation because it, it's a good thing that we're doing this because you know there, there are loads of benefits that makes us think more strategically about our business, the, the direction we're, we're going to go, looks at continuous improvements, thinks about uh, safety promotion and so on. So there's lots of really good stuff about this regulation change. Yes, it's gonna be difficult for organizations, but it's gonna be good. The important thing to, to understand and try and alleviate some people's fears with the introduction to the SMS, or the safety risk management system we're now referring to all the time, is that it's really based on the size and the complexity of the organization. So what that really means is depending on your scope and scale and size, then really your management system should reflect your own organization. So what I'm trying to say to you is you cannot apply a large scale organization sort of uh, management system to a small business or small organizations. It just won't work. It's too complicated. And therefore you're gonna fail from the hurdle. From the from the from the goal uh, from the 
start point really so you need to think about how your system is related to your own organization so therefore you really need to customize it and think really about making sure it's effective and sometimes i just maybe use like gold locks as an idea that maybe if you remember gold locks in three year three bears you know the porridge was either too hot too cold or the bed was too hard too or oh, too soft and so on just right it's the same for yourselves when you think about this management system you need to apply like that goldilocks sort of theory where you want to make sure that you're not doing too much you're not doing too little you just want to be aiming at the right level for yourselves because if it make if you make the management system too complicated then therefore you're not going to meet the intent of the regulation and you're going to fail and that's when you have like non-conformity is raised against you and so on so you really do need to keep it simple but make sure it suits your org organization for its complexity and size don't make it too difficult for yourselves remember this is going to be a transition that's the way to think about it it's a learning journey that we're all going to go on to try and make this work so that's enough about that about that next we've got the management system itself if you already have uh, other certificates that you may have like uh, within your own organization then you can merge it together so for example if you already have a part camo approval then you can merge the two merge the two what i mean by that the safety management system how you actually manage that the risks you may have a safety a separate sort of manual to re re reflect that a new change really is this what i would say the alternative means of compliance so all mocks so what this means is really is that if you're going to do something different to the amcs that already exist so therefore you're going to uh do so yeah do something different then really that would form part of your approval and that would be approved by the competent authority specific to that uh, requirement and then again you would be auditing you have to manage that and so on so again if you're going to do something different you really need to think about why you're doing it differently and again is the competent authority that obviously that has your uh, issues your approval are they going to be happy with that so if you are going to do something different you really have to demonstrate why you're doing something different and plus also remember linking it back to our uh safety risk management system you're going to have to manage that accordingly through that think about the, the risks the hazards who's going to be responsible for that and so on lots of things to consider on that next really if you think about it because we're talking about safety now then therefore we need or you will need a safety manager so that would be a new role in your own organization and again if you think about it we're talking about compliance so you're going to need or reallocate the position or title of the compliance monitoring manager now again everyone has different sort of titles and terms but you're going to have to have a safety manager so that may be shared role that somebody else or somebody may adopt i take on that sort of ownership but again until we get the amc and the gms are published then we'll have to understand whether that person can have share same sort of responsibility i the safety manager and the compliance management manager are the same individual but like a lot of things if that is the case then that will all be dependent on the scale and size of the organization so if you're a big organization that will not be possible you have to have a separate safety manager and a separate separate compliance monitor manager that's the way it'll work and likewise if you're the same person and a small organization then you need to think about the risks associated with that and again that's going to feed back into our safety risk management system think about the risks the hazards and so on okay next really something that is new is this internal safety reporting scheme so what that means is we're thinking about our errors near misses and hazards and so on so we need to start to need to think about that to encourage reporting within our own organization likewise you still got your occurrence reporting system that's basically much the same same but really that's going to be linked to or going to feed back into your internal safety reporting scheme that you have in place and that safety risk management system okay so we need to think about that also additionally you need to think about your immediate reaction to a safety problem so if you identify something then we need to think about that and how we're going to manage it but really that's coming from more from the competent authority and that's the way you, if they issue a notice how you're going to adapt and react to that again you're going to have some sort of process in place to manage it next because we've changed and we're now instructing the safety management system we need to think about then therefore our competency our staff we need to ensure they are trained and competent 
So therefore, our scope of competency assessments that we have currently in place under the Part 145 are going to change. Because people are going to have to know about the safety policy, the safety objectives, be trained on certain things like maybe doing risk assessments and so on. So the competency assessment is going to get bigger, not say complicated, but there'll be more content to cover and focus on those individuals. Just out of interest, the findings, so we still are like a level one, uh, but just out of interest, there are you can get level one findings now for these four areas. So they talk about moral practice or fraudulent use of your certificate, uh, lack of an accountable manager, if you falsification of submitted documentary evidence, i.e. to the competent authority, or they cannot gain access to your facility. So that'll be at like level one. Something that's different, again, it's not new because this is already the same thing that you'd see if you're familiar with Park Camo. It's the same types of findings that you'd be issued at like a level one. We've got us back to our findings again. Some sort of change to the, the requirements is obviously 145.a.95. Think back to your root cause analysis, your RCA. Then again, you're going to have to like a defined corrective action plan, implementation to the competent authority satisfaction and so on. All right, so we really need to up our game now and make sure that any RCA that we get involved in, in our own organization, has to be really a lot better in our approach. So therefore, that may require people need to be trained more or more competent in doing that. Next, uh, because we're introducing the safety risk management system, then therefore the exposition, the MOE, it's going to change. So the structure and the content, some of the uh, 145 references are going to change. It's going to get bigger, is what I'm trying to say. So therefore, we need to think about, again, how we're going to keep people informed of those changes uh, and what specific bits may be relevant to those individuals. Next, the order program. Because the requirements have got uh, increased massively, then therefore you think about it, the scope of the order program and the content has actually increased a lot. So therefore you need to think about in some ways, again, think about our risks. Do you have sufficient resources to actually manage the program now? And also we need to think about this program as well, is that it will change. It shouldn't be the same year in, year out, year in, year out. That's not the intent of the regulation, all right? It's got to evolve. Uh, and remember, you're going to focus on certain things. So you may be looking at risk assessments, or looking at certain sort of hazards and so on. The records retention, because we talk about the management system now, then therefore we need to document a lot more things that go on. For example, management of change. You were thinking about your contracts, whether you're a contractor or you have contractors, whether you have subcontractors, uh, think about all your hazards, the risks and so on all your management meetings that you may hold, they need to think about that. Because of all these changes, then therefore there's more emphasis on training because one of the core messages about the management system is we need to ensure people are trained and competent. So because of the changes, we need to think about safety. So therefore we need to bring people up to speed on understanding what, like a, for example, a risk assessment is, the hazards, identification, and so on how we may mitigate them, just be for thought. Likewise, the competency assessments that you may have to do now. Compliance monitoring, again, because of the scope that's increased, you need to ensure the people who are doing the auditing are familiar and aware of what goes on and how it works. And then just one other thing, just to consider really, like I said, that you may have to give your uh, people within your own organization, like risk assessments, some sort of hazard identification, other internal continuation training, because it's going to be a lot of changes. And this is what I was trying to say to you before. You need to think about how we're going to implement this. It's not from like, for example, getting to the 2nd of December, bang, we're off. It should be working like that. You should actually, in a progressive change, you know, recognize what you need to do and stage it out. Remember, if you're like a large organization, that's going to take time, right? Likewise, if you're a small organization, you may be able to implement it a lot quicker. But you just need to think about what the changes are, what people need to know, and so on. It's progressive transition, right? Okay, so that's the, one of the, the main changes. The only last one I'm just gonna highlight for you now, just out of interest, and really I'm just 
Referring back to the appendix two, so it's the class and rating systems, okay, for the terms of approval of the part 145 maintenance organization. Now, this is slightly different to the current regulation requirements. So I'm just going to read this out for you just so you understand. So it says here, it says a, uh, a category A class rating uh, means that the maintenance organization may carry out maintenance on aircraft or components, including engines and or auxiliary power units in accordance with their aircraft maintenance data, or if agreed by the competent authority in accordance with the component maintenance data only, so I'm now here, only while such components are fitted to the aircraft. Nevertheless, such a, uh, such an, un, sorry, a A-rated maintenance organization may temporarily remove a component for maintenance in order to improve access to that component. Exception when its removal generates the need for additional maintenance that the organization has not approved to perform. Such removal of component for maintenance by an a maintenance organization shall be subject to the, an appropriate control procedure in the MOE. So that's different, right? So that's another significant sort of change. Just something to think about. Okay, so I've given you a really good summary of some of the main sort of changes to this SMS being introduced into the Part 145 regulation. Remember, it is going to be a transition. You need to think about that now. You need to be working on it. And if you're not, then you're going to cut, you no, know, you shoot yourselves in the foot. It should be transition, right? Think about your plan because, again, the competent authority will want to see what you're doing about it. You know, what are your thoughts, how you're going to you know, allocate time and so on. So, really, the other sort of thing to consider is a budget, allocating resource, time, and so on, money, training, whatever that looks like. But you need to think about it. Like I've already told you, like the SMS, this or the safety manager, you're going to have to have somebody appointed for that. That person will either have to be trained if you're going to do it internally, or, or you're going to employ somebody else to do that. That's, that, that's why you need to think about the budget. How are you going to manage this sort of uh, change within your own organization? Remember, the competent authority, authority, when they do the audit, will, may want to see that and understand how you're moving forward with the implementation of this. So, just to summarize, really, how can we, or we can help you. If you need training, then obviously just reach out to us. We can do that, not a problem. We offer different types of training and we can customize to suit your own business sort of needs. If you need any audits and support, if you want to still like a all of you where you are now, what you need to do to move forward, then we can do that. We can help you with that. Not a problem. And if you need us in more detail, like consultancy, either like for example, writing your MOE or looking at other sort of documents or things to put in place, then we can do that. We've got experience in obviously looking at risks already. Okay, so if you need any help, then just reach out, out to us and we'll be more than happy to help. That's it really. Uh, on this sort of little session. I hopefully you've enjoyed it. I've given you some sort of key pointers just to think about food for thought. If you have any questions or you think I have said something wrong or you disagree with, then please just reach out to me. I'm happy to learn and share and learn from your other experience if that's the case. Okay. If you do want to get in contact with us, then please just call us on the number on the screen you just see there, or you can send us an email at sales at blue-algae.com or you can go to our web, website, hit the contact sort of page, and again, fill on or fill the narrative in and then hit send. Likewise, we'll always respond to you and give you some sort of feedback if that's the case. Remember, if you like the video, then please give us a like. And please, if you wish to, subscribe to our channel uh, to find out more and all the things that we actually published. Thanks for your time. All the best. Take care. Bye-bye.